All right, today we are going to talk about how to connect to MongoDB from our Next.js project. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be using Atlas, um, the cloud-based MongoDB for it. But if you have MongoDB installed locally on your computer, you're still good to go. So let's head straight to the tutorial. Okay, so for this, we'll create a new Next.js project, MPS. MPS create as app MongoDB connection. All right, so let's open our next year's project in our VS Code. Okay, so before we get started, we need to grab the um, URI from MongoDB. All right, so I just created a MongoDB account and let's go ahead and create our first cluster. So um, I'll continue. I'm going to choose the free plan, head straight here and, you know, create deployment. So wait a few minutes and do the capture. So while the cluster is being created, let's go and configure a few things to enable us to connect to this MongoDB Atlas from our Node.js. So first is the network access. So I'm going to the network access and I'm going to allow connection from every IP address. If you have a particular IP address that you intend to allow connection from, you can specify that. But now I'm going to be allowing connection from every IP address. So. I'm going to do allow access from anywhere. So this is going to give me access from my Node.js app. Then I can confirm. So as you can see, it says active. So this means we can access this MongoDB from any application or from any IP address. So let's go back to our database. All right, it seems that our cluster has been successfully created. So let's click connect and set up a user. So I can choose admin, password is gonna be admin. And please don't share this password with anybody. This is my experimental account. So click create user and then we have a user. So let's select a connection method to connect to our MongoDB. So I'm going to choose driver. So I'm going to choose Node.js 6.7. So this is the MongoDB URI. You don't have to share this code with anybody because anyone who has access to this code automatically has access to your database. So you want to copy this code and put it in the environmental variable. So I'm going to create a .env file at the root folder. And I'll copy this code here. We'll also need a MongoDB name. So I'm going to name this um, testing. Okay. So let's get started with the coding. All right. So one last thing that we need to do is to change the DB password to the password we used in our MongoDB. So I can still remember the password, it is admin. All right. So you can change this to whatever password you used to set up your, um, you know, the user account on MongoDB website. So another thing we have to do right here is to, um, you know, create a MongoDB file for connection. So let's go to the folder and create a new one like so this is going to have the mongodb.ts file the inside the mongodb.ts file we are going to be importing the mongodb uri 
from process.emb.mongo URI. As strings, we are also going to need the MongoDB name. As strange, okay. So one more thing we need to do is to check if these values are really, you know, valid. So we want to validate the values. If not, we throw an error. All right, so we also need to create a function for connection. Actually, before we proceed, we need to install Mongoose. So I'm going to do npm install Mongoose. Let's wait a few minutes for this to install. All right, so now that we have um, the Mongoose successfully installed, let's import it. So we'll make this an asynchronous function with try and catch block. All right, now, so we are done with this file. We also have to, you know, create another file. This is called the instrumentation.ts file. So it's also going to be in the root folder. So inside this file, we have the code that will actually execute the connect DB once, anytime we run npn run dev or npn start in nextjs so this is going to you know prevent our connect db from running at every instance so what this register function does for us is to execute the connect db once immediately we run our npm run dev or npm start So one last thing that we need to do is go to our nest.config file and set up experimenter. So we're just gonna leave it this way. So we are just going to have the experimenter this way. This is to make sure that the, our code is actually running. All right, so let's run npm run dev and see if it's going to work. All right, it seems we have an error. It says, uh, All right, we actually have an error. It says expected connection string to start with MongoDB. All right, so we need to go and check our connection string. So these are our connection string here. So let me put them inside a string and see. All right, so let's go back to the code and check what might be wrong. So it happened that we used the MongoDB name instead of the MongoDB URI. So let's run this code. All right, so the code says database connection is successful. So this means that we can query data from our MongoDB we can also send data, we can post, we can delete, we can do all sorts of things. So let's go ahead and, you know, write some code. So first we need to create um, the models folder. Now, um, inside the model folder, I'm going to have product.model. So I want to create a model for a product. 
So just the product name and the price. So first, we want to check if this model actually exists. If it doesn't exist, then what we do is um, we create a new one. If it exists, we make use of the already existing model. So with that, I'm going to import models. Alright, so with this, we are good to go. Let's go and make queries and add to the database using this model. Alright, so we need to create the API routes for interacting with the model, the product model. So inside the app directory, I'll create an API route. Then I'll also create a product route inside the API route. And here I'm going to have the route.ts. And I'll start with the get and uh, the post methods. So basically what we are doing is we just imported the product model from the you know models then also we fetched products from the product model then if it's successful we send the data to the front end if it's not then we send an error message and log the error to the console we also have to you know complete the post method We don't really need this. All right, so let's um, let's start interacting with this. So I have an extension on my VS called Thunderlight that we can use to actually interact with this API route without, you know, building um, HTML. So this is going to be a push request. So let's send and see. It seems there's an error, so we need to go and check. So this is actually product, not products. So I'm going to remove the S. And let's try again. says no response is returned so a few minutes let me you know troubleshoot this all right i think the problem we have here is i'm not actually returning a success message so just like we have here I could actually add a status 200 to this. All 
okay probably the first uh, the first request went through so we're gonna try again all right it says product added successfully so we'll try to fetch um okay let's add mango all right this works so let's try to fetch product from this route okay so we have the mango we also have two oranges so let's go to the you know let's go back to the um, mongodb website to check So we go to cluster um browse collection so this is actually the name of the database we used then this is the products collection so inside we have the fruits so this is the oranges and this is also the mango so thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video subscribe to my channel share this video and please don't forget to you know like the video